to have the Chief Executive of the NHS Confederation uh, with us now, and that is Matthew Taylor. Hello to you, Mr Taylor. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm sure you heard what the Minister said today, saying we don't need the Plan B at the moment, no more lockdowns. What we need is people to uh, take up their boosters and vaccinations. So the government said that the criteria for determining whether or not we enacted elements of Plan B was the position of the health service. And the health service is facing a perfect storm. It's the combination of three things. It is the fact that winter is always tough for the health service for various reasons. It's the fact that we have got uh, thousands of COVID patients in hospital, and it looks like those numbers are rising in line with the rising infection rate. And we've also got the huge uh, demand, pent-up demand that's built up over the last 18 months, not just people on waiting lists, but people who haven't been to see the doctor, some of whom are now presenting with quite challenging symptoms. So the health service is working incredibly hard and has managed to get many services back on track and even to chip away at those waiting lists. But every health service leader I speak to says that they are right at the edge. And we're already missing important targets, missing targets on waiting times in emergency departments, missing ambulance response targets, missing targets on waiting lists. And that's the situation now in the middle of October. So we, uh, we know that things are almost inevitably going to get worse. And the question is simply this, do we accept some inconveniences, the inconveniences of Plan B, and do we recognise that as a nation we need to get behind our health and care system over the next months? Or do we somehow cross our fingers and hope that the almost inevitable doesn't happen and stumble into a crisis? The Minister, I did push him on that, sir, and the Minister uh, say it's just not helpful to talk about restrictions. We need to get the economy uh, back on track again and all these talk of, of restrictions and potential lockdowns, it's not going to happen. Well, the question is, do we need to act? And I would say the overwhelming evidence is that we do need to act. And then the question is, is it better to act early and take measures which don't stop the economy working, but I recognise they are inconvenient for people, or do we wait, wait for things to get worse and possibly risk having to take more severe measures? So the elements of Plan B enable us to carry on with our lives, to carry on with the economy, but to do it in a way which reduces the risk. And after all, most of the measures in Plan B are measures that other countries in Europe are continuing to enact, and they have lower infection rates than we do. But the difference, uh, the Minister was saying, is uh, the vaccination programme. We didn't have the vaccination programme this time last year. And although we can see people um, are getting COVID, perhaps for the second time, they're not, it's not as severe than, and not as many people are, are dying uh, from COVID as we saw at the beginning of the year. Yes, but uh, as you've just discussed, we have the issue of waning immunity. We don't know exactly what's going on, but it does look as though part of what's driving more cases and then further down the line, more hospitalisation is that waning immunity. It is absolutely vital that people take up the opportunity of the booster jabs and get a flu jab. In fact, what we're saying today is not just Plan B, but Plan B plus. And the plus bit is that we as the public need to do things which will make things uh, better for the health service. That's taking up these vaccinations. It's using the health service responsibly. It's supporting health and care staff, as we did during wave one and wave two of COVID. So it's absolutely vital we do that. But the reality is those numbers uh, are rising. They're continuing uh, to rise. And that's why we need to act now, because the effect of acting now will not be felt for a few weeks. But if we don't act now, Already we're in a situation where it is likely that in two or three weeks things are going to be worse. So that's why we need to act uh, immediately. But it sounds as though you're on the same page as the government. There's, you're saying the same thing. Make sure that you get your booster or make sure that the kids get vaccinated and things will be OK. No, because that will take time. And in the time that it is taking us to get those boosters, and we all hope that by the, you know, by the point of next spring, we're in a position where most people who, have, who need the booster vaccine um, have had it and that we are able to get things back on track. But over the next few months, while that vaccine is rolling out, the numbers are continuing to rise. And that's why we need to take action to reduce the spread uh, of the virus. We've got a very particular problem over this winter and we need to act. You sound very frustrated um, by um, the, I suppose, um, inaction, you might use that word, of the government. Just how bad do you think things are going to get in, in the next few weeks unless um, they activate Plan B plus? I think what's frustrating is that the government has said that it is the pressure on the health service that will be the determinant of whether or not they act. 
I speak to health leaders every day in every part of the service, ambulance services, mental health services, the acute sector. I haven't spoken to a single one who doesn't say that they are incredibly stretched. We are already missing by a significant margin our targets on waiting times in emergency departments, waiting times for ambulance, of course, the waiting lists themselves. So we're missing those targets now, and that has an impact on patient safety. And it's only going to get worse. So the government needs to it needs to act on its promise, and its promise is to try to protect the NHS from becoming overwhelmed. And that's where we need to act now in order to head off that. And if we don't, I'm afraid we will once again, and we have been here before, we will stumble into a crisis. So what does Plan B Plus look like for you? What do you want to see happen? So there's Plan B, which is the measures the government has talked about, which is uh, requiring people to wear masks in crowded places, uh, discouraging unnecessary indoor uh, uh, gatherings, working from home if you can. The plus part is the way in which we use the health service. When we looked at when COVID first wave happened, we were out applauding the health service on a Thursday evening. Now I'm sadly hearing of GPs who are being uh, abused by patients because they aren't getting the service that they want because those GPs are overwhelmed or are only able to offer initially a digital consultation, for example. So getting behind the health service. And also there are other things that we can do. We absolutely, as I've said, we can get the jabs that we need to have, but also look out for our neighbours. There's more news today about shortages in social care. Now, social care is outside the NHS, but if people are not getting their social care visit during the day, they are more likely to end up needing an ambulance. So if there are people in your community who you know are vulnerable, you know, I check in on them because they may not be doing that social care visit because there are parts of our social care system where you've got vacancy rates of 10, 15 percent. OK, so you want people to be wearing masks in um, public places. Um, do you want um, travel restrictions, people not going overseas on holiday, perhaps the return of the red list? Um, and do you want kids to still be going to school? Just explain to me in more detail what it is that you're looking for that the government is not doing at the moment. Look, it's the responsibility of the government and its scientific advisors to work through what exactly is needed. I don't think the measures you've just described, closing schools or banning international travel, are necessary at this stage. And that's part of the argument. If we can do those things which are inconvenient but allow life to go on, uh, then we may not have to do things which, which will have a bigger impact. Uh, you know, I, I use the London Underground quite a lot. And I have noticed that there are fewer people wearing masks on underground in, on the underground. I've also noticed that, you know, if you're in a carriage where most people are wearing masks, those who aren't, it's kind of, they clock it and they put their masks on. But when you're in a carriage where half the people aren't, then there isn't any pressure. So we, we need to support each other and the government needs to support us in doing those things, which may be an inconvenience, but which do make a difference. And so if you can work from home, government, work from that, home. though, is it, sir? I mean, that's, that's down to our own responsibility. I mean, you have, it's a legal requirement to wear your mask on the underground. If people don't do it, there's not much the uh, government can do about that. It's a about our own personal responsibility, isn't it? Well, it is, but government plays an important role in, in shaping the national conversation. And I think that's why we're calling this Plan B Plus, because we're, we're calling on the government to, to, to urge a national mobilisation behind our health and care system, to, to recognise the inevitability of an incredibly difficult few months ahead and to be, give a very clear message to the public. And that does make a difference. So, yes, we should all take responsibility. But when we, if we've heard the government say, look, this is the crisis that we're facing, you do need to act, then you know, it reminds us and it, it embo in, in, emboldens us to say to the person sitting next to us on the tube, you've forgotten your mask, or to say to our employer, look, actually, I can do this from home. So government messaging does help each of us to do the right thing. Just before I let you go, uh, Mr Taylor, the uh, one of the other vaccines available or potentially available soon would be Valneva. Do you know about that vaccine? Tell us about why that we're not using that at the moment. Uh, I know I don't know about that. Um, look, the, the important thing is the availability of vaccines overall. And what I don't want people to feel is that, in a sense, they're not able to get vaccinations. If you are in the category that is supposed to be getting a booster jab or getting a flu jab, then, you know, it is there. The services are available and you need to go out and get it. OK, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on the programme this morning. Thank you.